Well, Anthony, uh, we have arrived at the eighth chapter. Wow. Uh, I've loved each mm-hmm. chapter. Each mm-hmm. one has been just filled uh, richly with so very many wonderful Very sane and real, yeah. isn't it? Very practical. Very practical. And yet very spiritual. Very spiritual. The wisdom of God, I Absolutely. think, as opposed to the wisdom of men. Yes. And uh, again, you know, I, I would encourage our readers, um, our uh, viewers, go back and, and read these things again and read them in a setting right. and, you know, take it all in. Yes. And spend some time with these things. Perhaps it's using uh, different translations, sometimes use a paraphrase yes. translation, sure. as well as your standard sure. Bible, whatever it is, uh, your New American Standard yeah. is good. RSV and RSV NAB, the Roman Catholic Bible, is well translated yeah. in many yeah. cases. Yeah. And then get a paraphrase version yeah. as well. Right. And drink in the sanity and yes. the reasonableness <laughs> of, of our brother Paul that's, here. That's right. Uh, well, I am I am a, a fan of Paul, yeah, yes. and uh, much so because of his words, and, yes. Uh, yes. and because of the respect that others in New Testament times had for him. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the people who want to diminish Paul, oh. I think they themselves are the ones that oh, yes. are, are off track. Oh, terribly. Paul was very much so mm. on on the track. Mm. On uh, yes, on, allowed to write about the same quantity of New Testament as Luke. Luke actually wrote. If you exclude Hebrews from Paul, it you know, doesn't matter. Yeah. Then Luke wrote equally yes. the same yeah. volume with his Luke and Acts. Yes, absolutely. And he's probably almost certainly the only Gentile writer yeah. of there all those Jewish writers. That's right. Wow. Mm-hmm. So now we're at the eighth chapter, and uh, Paul is just rolling with these practical yes. issues, these practical matters. And we'll see, I think, that it, once again he's dealing with practical issues here in the eighth chapter. Mm-hmm. But it leads to some uh, some really great uh, expounding oh, of, yes. of huge truths about God and, and hugely about relevant to the current discussion. Oh my land, yes, is massive yeah. on this issue of who yeah. God is. So eight in verse one. Now concerning food offered to idols, mm-hmm. we know that all of us possess knowledge. Mm-hmm. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Verse 2, if anyone imagines that he knows something, he does not yet know as he ought to know. Verse 3, but if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Verse 4, therefore, as the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence, and that there is no God but one. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as indeed there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom are all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom are all things and through whom we exist. Powerful, amazing Right. Statements here. Yeah. Riveting Paul to the Old Testament. Don't yes, you? absolutely. Thank the Lord for consistency. Yes. This is Shema in Deuteronomy I love chapter it. 6. Jesus repeats it in Mark 12, 29. Yes. Paul repeats, we don't have to tangle, mm. heaven forbid, over who God is. <laughs> That's right. There's one God of the Jews yes, and one God of the Gentiles. That's never yes. a question mm. until some very unfortunate theologians thought they could find something else, and that is mass yes. chaos. The, the Shema statement here is wonderful. There is one God, the Father, that's it. Yes. That's what everybody ought to believe. Lovely. And, Trinitarian uh, idea is not there. I, lo- I love it that uh, Paul doesn't say, for to us as Christians, <clears throat> yes. there is one God in three persons. Absolutely. There's no hint of that, Never, no ever. thought of that. Nowhere. When, no, he, no. when he defines no, God, yes. he also... Ex- doesn't include the Lord that no, he's going to speak of in the same yet, word. He's, he's saying the the God is, that one God is the Father. And that's uh, and, uh, marvelous. And, and of course the Spirit of God is not a separate person no, from the not Father. At all. It, it is the Father no. in action. And yeah. uh, But then in addition to the one God, there is one Lord. Not God. Lord Messiah. Lord Messiah. Lord Jesus Christ. It's plain common sense that if you believe in the Trinity somewhere, you would say there's one God 
Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Right. That doesn't exist. It is not there. The word three never ever occurs yes, yes. in the definition of God in exactly. the scripture period. Ever. Not in the Old Testament, not in the New Testament. So I agree with those commentators who say to imagine that Paul believed in the Trinity shows a very inadequate concept of history. It's just <laughs> wrong. They hadn't heard of that. It's like saying, what sort of software did Paul have on his computer? <laughs> yes. Something like that. He didn't own a computer, so that, well, that kind of ends that. Yes. It's like saying, well, we know the Queen flies the American flag over Buckingham Palace. We don't. <laughs> Certainly it does not happen. The idea that God is born or that God died is, is silly. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Don't even go there. Yeah. And yet we have people actually saying things yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> they shouldn't be taken seriously. No. I mean, what they're saying isn't, isn't to be taken seriously, yeah, certainly. And, and I think... Yeah. Uh, people who are promoting a three-person God uh, shouldn't, they should probably just move on and not, not mess with the Bible. They should move on and, and admit that we are uh, doing this based on our creeds and post-biblical things. When you get to the Bible, we've got one God and Paul identifies him very clearly as the Father, period. That's, that's Jesus in John 17 and 3. Yeah. And 1,300 times more, too. Yeah. 1,300 yeah. times. Yeah. Where Jesus is called God for sure twice, <laughs> yeah. as against 1,300 references to God, meaning the Father. Surely that suggests to anybody who's yeah. got half an eye open that these people are not trying to tell you that they're equally God. Yes, yes. Especially when the Archbishop, uh, one of our recent Archbishops of Canterbury, says Jesus never claimed deity for himself. <laughs> yes. Evangelical scholars like Howard Marshall and uh, others have said that Jesus is not God just like that. <laughs> yes. Simpliciter. They use a Latin word yeah, you know, yeah. to make it slightly more scholarly. But they know that Jesus is not Yahweh mm -hmm. just like that. That's just wrong. Yeah. So this is a very powerful statement, mm -hmm. but it says what we believe about God yes. and what we believe about Jesus. Right. God is the Father. Yes. Jesus is... Uh, the Christ of yes. God. He is He is the Lord, the Messiah. And, uh, That's like very that. clear. There's another evangelical who says that Jesus is not Yahweh tout court. <laughs> French means just like that. <laughs> yes. It's foggy, yeah. but he's getting at a very important yeah, point. Yeah, it's excellent. But out there in a less educated uh, environment, if you don't say Jesus is God, yeah. flat out, then you are relegated yeah. to the category of heretic. Yeah. Yeah. Not no my goodness, yes, that's right. That's sad. The educational level is very poor. Yes. They need to read at least what these giants in Christology say. James Dunn, yes, Ricardo, yes. Baucom, Howard Marshall, F.F. F. Bruce even. Yes. I know that they are often Trinitarians in some sense, mm. but if you read them very carefully, mm. they're not saying Jesus is Yahweh. Yes, yes. Wow. Well. I like that. It is by God that Jesus himself exists. Yes. And, uh, uh, yes. It is by God that he comes into existence. And all Lord things is. that Jesus did then as Lord, as Messiah, mm. is because he's empowered right. and commissioned by God. And at his exaltation, he still has a God. Yes. My God. The, well, God cannot have a God. The <laughs> ultimate right. God cannot have a the, God. I mean, that's his common yeah. sense. That uh, Revelation 3 and verse 12. Says should, and this is after Jesus is in exactly heaven, for goodness right. sakes. Right. So, oh, and this is the title, by the way. Is yes. We're looking at, uh, we're at about. Uh, Keegan Chandler's yes. new book. I haven't finished reading and I did begin right, right. and uh, but this is lovely I, I think uh, yes. we can uh, recommend this can we show to, that to uh, the camera uh, yes. well, absolutely we and uh, I don't the God and, uh, of Jesus in light of Christian dogma by Keegan Chandler right who has tackled the subject both from the historical point of view and the biblical point of view and that is a very very interesting read excellent we have Dan's book here oh, it, uh, the one in defense of God J. Dan Gill very interesting reflections on the same subject. Mm -hmm. We have in mind, Jesus was not a Trinitarian. Why are you? That's right. You're claiming to follow Jesus. <laughs> Provocative oh. titles. And yeah. we have Greg Dival's book, They Never Taught Me This, They Didn't Teach Me This in Church. Mm. So, so the world is full of interesting A lot documents. of uh, materials yes. for people to think about right. and read and consider. Uh, I think that's, that's excellent. Absolutely. Get an education in this Absolutely. very interesting topic. Absolutely. Defining the universe yeah. by defining who God Absolutely. is. 
And keep in mind that with all of these uh, beneficial things, there's still nothing that can take the place of just easy, of simple Bible reading. That's right. Uh, and uh, just letting the Bible speak to us. Right. Instead of us imposing on it what we already think, yes. let it talk to us, yes. so to speak. And, uh, and it's great. Yep. And watch out for the false capital letters, like the Lord said to my Lord, that second Lord there is not the word for God. Yes, it yes. should be a little L. Right. Look out for that. But unfortunately, translations, particularly the NIV, yeah. are helping you, in mm. quotes, to see what they want you to see. So you must imagine a crime scene mm. here and there. Yeah. In the beginning was the word, not necessarily capital W. That's been forced yeah. on you. <laughs> and other things. That's another subject. But the issue of who God is is well worth investigating well, over a, yes. an extended period if necessary yeah. to make sure you get that one right. It seems to me that uh, uh, the, uh, there is for us this one God, mm -hmm. the Father, mm -hmm. from whom are all things and for whom we exist. Yes. And uh, I think that includes uh, Jesus exists, as I say, because of, of course, Him. Of course, that too. Uh, and then I think in, a, in another perspective uh, that there is also one Lord who's been made Lord by God. That's uh, right. Acts 2.36. Yes, yes. And uh, through whom God has wow. created this new creation, Absolutely. I think, through and, uh, oh. this, that's coming and yeah. happening. Yeah. And we, Christians, uh, we exist through Him. And God has created a new yes. a new thing, a new yes. creation in yes. Christ. So I don't know, uh, it doesn't seem to me that uh, that this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, that Jesus, the Lord, uh, uh, created all things in the beginning or that even God was creating yeah. all things through him. Yeah, None of that no, works. But when you talk about a whole new creation, mm -hmm. now we come to uh, Christ and mm -hmm. all, we now exist through Jesus God has created us through Jesus, and He's creating all things that are to come through Jesus. This That's creation. exactly right. It reminds me of Tom Wright, Bishop Wright, not agreeing with everything he says, but he, he makes this point. The word God in the New Testament has the article very often, the God, not mm -hmm. just any God, the God. And Bishop Wright says this has a sharp polemic edge on it. Ah, the yes. one God, Isotheos in Greek, the one God, or even monosotheos, both expressions, the only God, the one and only God. These are the taken for granted of Scripture. Yes, yes. I wish people would get that clear because it makes the <laughs> Bible right. come alive in yes, a new exactly. way. Are extensive, and you'll see exactly how Adonai, second Lord in Psalm 101, is not God. It's not yep. God's being God. The universe. <laughs> collapses, is yeah. shattered by that. Yeah, yeah. It's God speaking to a super elevated man. Mm, mm. Ah, that gets to be very now interesting. So, that's right. One even uh, uh, greater than the angels. This is greater tremendous. than the it's, angels. That's, that's amazing. That, that is a truly a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. It will make the Bible come alive in a yes. brand new way. You will be amazed when Absolutely. you deal with God and super elevated yeah. man, sinless man, not God and God. Yes. That's to be no avoided sense. at right. all costs. That's right. So this is wonderful. Uh, God created all things, including Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And now th through, uh, through Adam, God created the human race, if yes. you think of it that way. But now through Jesus, God has created us. Yes. We exist yes. because of Jesus and through him. New creation. And this new creation and all that's coming, the, the wonderful, Isn't amazing right? kingdom of God. Uh, the recreation, if you will, is all through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ. So it's just Paul's frame of uh, reference here, uh, exactly. what he's thinking right. about. It's a very simple fact that's not known to the public, and that is that the expression, our Yahweh, is impossible. Oh, my. Yes. So as long as you're talking about our Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. in one passage Paul says, my Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. yes. you are not talking about Yahweh. Yes, that's right. Because Yahweh cannot take a possessive, pronoun. Mm. It's impossible to say my Yahweh mm. or our Yahweh. This, that's not a scriptural thing. It's not thing, possible. It? We, we don't see that in the scripture. It's not there. Yeah. So once you're talking about our Lord, you're yeah. not talking about Yahweh. Yes, yes. Now granted that Jesus can be called Lord and the Father can be called Lord. The devil plays on that equivocation mm -hmm, that's mm -hmm. possible. That's right. But you distinguish between them by saying our Lord, my Lord, it's exactly parallel to our Lord David, you see. Mm -hmm. It's a messianic title, Luke 2, 11. Today is born in the city of Bethlehem. This is his birth certificate. The one who is Messiah Lord. 
Not God, Lord. Yes, yes. Nobody thought God was born. Yeah. Luke has laid this out so beautifully in his account by introducing the principal players in the drama as Messiah Lord in 2.11 wow, and yeah. Yahweh's Messiah in 2.26. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. This is very clear. These people knew what they were doing when they were writing, but it <laughs> hasn't prevented us from going off in various directions yes, astray yes. Oh, my land, yes. from the simplicity into the vast complexity yes. of Trinitarianism. As someone said, there's not much that human beings can't mess up. So we've done so it. We've done it very well. We've done it to our to the proper understanding of God, for goodness sake. And then so, even yeah. burned people at the stake oh, like John Calvin, oh, yes. who authorized Horrible. the yes. killing of yes. surveyors at the stake. That should wow. be a warning flag against my approving goodness. without proper criticism, what Calvin was out yeah, to. Oh my land. And isn't that a lesson, I think, if, if Jesus' words about uh, you shall know them by their fruits, mm. uh, yes. speaking uh, exactly. by example of a tree, Absolutely. but you know what a, what a tree is yes. by the fruit it bears. Oh. You'll know them by their fruits. Horrible. But when you begin to look at the post-biblical picture, <sighs> Uh, and the developments of a multi-person God and how uh, grievous that was, how oh, yeah. people fought, Absolutely. wrestled, struggled on all yeah. sides of that, yeah. how that they cursed one another, yes. physically attacked one yes. another in order to establish what we now revere, supposedly, as a three-person God. That's not right. It's just, can't we look at the fruits that people bore and, and, and realize that they, by their own... Yes. press and authority yes. and abuse yes. force those issues yes. on people. That lets me to say, I don't want to be a part of that. No, I, I don't want to be a party to a good it. Point. Yeah. So the greatest refutation of Trinitarianism is the post-biblical chaos. I think so. That exactly. is a self-refutation. Exactly. That doesn't sound like scripture exactly. at all. Therefore, it isn't scripture. Yes. It's a Greek exactly. philosophical uh, invention, unfortunately. Well, you know, and I was saying, I was, I was saying the other night, mm -hmm. um, if God is not the author of confusion, yes. then he's certainly not the author of no. the doctrine of the Trinity right. because that is nothing but confusion right. from the word go. That's Everybody right. who's honest with themselves That's knows right. that and admits that. That's right. So this is not a, a, a doctrine of God. No. Not from God, not from the Lord too Jesus. Complicated. It's far too complicated, far too Absolutely. confusing. God's not the yes. author of confusion, so he's certainly not party to this doctrine of That's confusion. Correct. That must that be people so. And the challenge, if you read The God of Jesus by Keegan Chandler, he makes a very interesting point that it's the hostile, unbelieving Jews yes. who accuse Jesus yes. of making himself equal with God. The Absolutely. very thing that Trinitarianism proposes. That's an argument for a hostile, blinded yes. Jew oh, my land, of yeah. whom Jesus said, your father's the devil. Yes, absolutely. So watch out for using a Jewish false argument to promote what you think is truth. Oh, my land, that yeah. could be the, yeah. putting yourself on the wrong side of the wow. argument. Yeah. Anyway, The God of Jesus by King Excellent. Chandler. Please yeah, read that I'm excited one about by this. Dan, the one yeah. in defense and these, of God. And these books are available uh, on Amazon. Right, right? Amazon yeah, or yeah, from sure. the Atlanta Bible College sure. at 800 Three four seven, four two six one. Yeah, so. Check your truth against our error. There's <laughs> yes. nothing like that. There's no harm <laughs> right. in that. Check your truth yeah. against our erroneous arguments. So you think, and that's you'll right. be all the stronger. That's right. If that's the way you if go. If that is it, that's right. But let me tell you that people around the world are changing their minds. That's absolutely, and uh, and that's very encouraging. It it's is. if you are beginning to see this understanding about the mm -hmm. one true God. God being the Father yes. only, yes. Uh, and Jesus being his Messiah, his Christ, Sinless Messiah. then you're not alone, no, because no. we're hearing from po folks, yes. I know I do, and yes. I think you do as oh, well, yeah, uh, every we week know. we're hearing from new right. people who are coming to the yep. sometimes saying, I was of this particular, yes. name your denomination, yes. Yes. and saying, but for the first time in my life, I'm feeling free, yes. I understand right. these truths about right. God. Verse 7. After he said there is only the one God, that is the Father, now that settles that one. Yes. And then we have the one Lord, yes. Jesus the Messiah. Messiah. The Lord Messiah. He then goes on to say, however, not all possess this knowledge. That's very true. But some, through former association <laughs> mm -hmm. with idols, mm. eat food as really offered to an idol. Wow. And their conscience being weak is defiled. Yes. Wow. Wow. Uh, so he's saying, some of you were formerly uh, idol worshippers, yeah, yeah. and to this day, 
you have a problem with eating something that was sacrificed yes. to an idol, uh, yes. and uh, because yes. you feel contaminated by that, and, that's right. Uh, and so he's yes. he's recognizing that he's saying yes. uh, your conscience is defiled by that. That's, that's unfortunate, right. but that's it. Because Paul has already stated, an idol is nothing. An idol can't really defile you. It's an all it's in your mind that's the problem. That's right. And uh, and of course the demons are behind the idols. Oh yes, that's that. right. That's exactly. The demonic strongholds yes. are caused by demons who are working through exactly. physical idols. Yes, exactly. Interesting, he says in verse eight there that not everybody has this knowledge. The Shema, apparently, the un unity yeah. of God passage is not available to everybody because of idolatry, please note. Mm -hmm. yes, idolatry yes. is the problem. Yes, if you could move that out of the way, then people could see through to the true God. Yeah. Uh, verse 8, food will not commend us to God. We're no worse off if we do not eat, mm -hmm. and no better off mm -hmm. if we do eat. Mm -hmm. uh, it's interesting, he doesn't take out time there, of course, to, to say anything at that point about no. unclean foods no, and no, all no, that no. business no. from Moses. No. That's no longer an issue. That's not, not issue. The food doesn't come in no. you to God, or not. No. You know, you think that this is about eating food? Uh, and uh, as he said to uh, the Romans in Romans yes, 14, 14, he said, you know, the, the kingdom of God is not about meat and no. drinking particular exactly. foods and all that sort of thing. So, And I think we see that here too. Food doesn't commend you to God. He's not happy about what you eat or don't eat. He doesn't really care. Now, if your conscience bothers you, then don't, then that's don't touch it. That's exactly but Then you're weak, he says. Yeah. Or if yeah. you're a vegetarian, all right, yeah. tolerate each other, yeah. but recognize that you're weak. Now, grow up and be like Paul. Yeah. That's there you You'll go. get over that right. fact that Jesus, of course, was not a vegetarian, so don't make that an issue. Exactly. <laughs> I like that. Okay. Verse 9, but take care that this right of yours yes. does not somehow become a stumbling block yes, to the weak. weak. So you may have a weak brother, ah. and uh, he, uh, he is disturbed about eating something that was sacrificed mm -hmm. to an idol. Uh, I guess we should clarify for our viewers that uh, in the temple worship and temple systems, food was then sacrificed to idols, mm -hmm. and so there was a communion, a relationship yes. between the, yes. the person who was eating the food and the yes. idol in yes. their minds. And uh, so Paul has begun this chapter by wow. saying, an idol is nothing. It's just, right. it's nothing itself. Right. Uh, but uh, then he's coming down and said, yep, we've got a problem here. There are people who worshiped idols, mm -hmm. and for them to eat food that has been sacrificed to yes. an idol, and sometimes often was, I understand yeah. that uh, the excess foods from the temple were often sold in the marketplace ah, even. Yes. Uh, so uh, if that's so, or by whatever means, yes. you're offered food that had been offered to, a sac uh, to an idol. Yes. Paul says, that's nothing. Food doesn't mean a thing. Yeah. One way or the other, We're, that's that's not it. On the other hand, if you in your mind that associates you to that idol, then you've got a problem and yeah. you should not eat. Because the demons are behind yeah. the idols. Right. You know, then there up you go. The that's right. Not oh, there you there you go. That's he right. does use the word demon. Yes, he does. Passage, You're right. Remember. That's, a, that's exactly that right. You're exactly right. Yes. And demons do exist. You don't talk yes. about non-existent demons. <laughs> that's right. That would, be very that would make no sense at all. No sense at all. <laughs> Use the word demonia. You yeah. imply that you believe they exist. That's right. That's right. Of course. That's right. Okay. So anyway, I think uh, I think his caution here is: you, as a strong person, knows the idol is nothing, mm -hmm. and whether you eat food that was sacrificed to an idol or not doesn't really mean anything. But you might not want to offer food to your friend, your Christian That's right, neighbor, he's weak, isn't he? Because he would have a real problem with this. And, Out of uh, deference to him and yeah, his weakness. Certainly. Then uh, you'd want to be careful uh, yes. in that regard. So, yes. so, mm -hmm. so he says uh, again, uh, we're no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. Mm -hmm. But take care that this right of yours uh, does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. Yes. For if someone sees you who have knowledge mm -hmm. eating yes. in an idol's temple, will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak mm -hmm. to eat food offered to idols? So it seems to me he's saying in those days there was much of the social world that 
that functioned around temples, sure. even as uh, they would now in church. You might be invited to a, a wedding. You might be invited to some other thing of friends, neighbors, relatives, and it's down at the local temple. Yes. Uh, I think Paul would caution you, yes. be careful there, because yeah. actually the food been sacrificed to that idol. It can't really physically hurt you. It's not yeah. that. Yeah. But your, your weak brother might be offended by that. Might, you can handle this maybe, you but your weak it. brother can't. That's and he might be drawn back into idol that's worship right. or yes. uh, be a, a, a great yeah. problem. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that's right, yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, although, as you said, the idol in itself is nothing. It's a yeah. non-entity. It has yeah. no ultimate power. Yeah. However, don't forget the demons, the demons are that behind are, exactly those right. idols. They, yes. The demon is not the physical mm. idol you look at. Excellent. But the yeah. demonic is, uh, in fact, the gods of the nations are demons. That's yes. in the Septuagint version yes. of the Old Testament. Those pagan gods are, in right. fact, demons masquerading as gods. Absolutely. That's dangerous. Yes. So uh, he said in verse 10, For if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an mm -hmm. idol's temple, mm -hmm. will he not be encouraged if his yeah. conscience is weak? Yes to eat foods offered to idols, mm -hmm. then he's going to do that with true conscience to the idol and be yes. drawn into something yes. relative to demon worship. Yes, you mustn't wound their weaker mm -hmm. conscience, That's right. the way to put it. Eleven, and so by your knowledge, this mm -hmm. weak person mm -hmm. is destroyed. Mm -hmm. Wow. Awful. The brother for whom Christ died, mm -hmm. oh my land. Mm -hmm. Verse 12, thus sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, Yes. You sin against Christ. Yes. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat hmm. meat lest I make my brother stumble. Yes. So, uh, yes. Very solid, very practical. Right. Very practical. Uh, but his concern is uh, that uh, uh, while the meat in itself is fine for sustenance, <laughs> uh, yes. whether it was uh, somebody sacrificed to an idol or not, the meat itself can't yes. hurt you. That's right. And it doesn't commend you to God or not to God. Right. But on the other hand, if you may have weak brothers who mm -hmm. associate that with the idol in such a way that if they ate it, they would feel condemned. They would feel... We all need to grow up, then, don't we? Yeah. Be like Paul, be like Jesus. Excellent. Give yeah. up our weakness and move right. forward. Right. 